contour portraits with neurographic lines. Well, that's a mouthful and a half. Let's break this into chunks and show you that no matter where you are in your artistic journey, you will be successful with this project. You're going to start off with a big piece of Bristol board and a shape, a large shape of some sort. You can go with a rectangle or square, but play around with the idea of a circle, an octagon, a triangle. The interesting shape is going to help communicate this style of pop art once it's finished. Next, we're going to find the contour lines of our original photo. Contour lines are like an outline, except we're not focusing on the very outer edge of the object. We're focusing on sort of the main lines that make the object what it is. In this case, a person's face. So I'm going to draw right onto my original photograph and find the most important lines. I'm simply drawing right onto the photograph with my Sharpie. In the end, if you mess this step up, it doesn't matter because you do not have to take any of these lines that you're making and transfer them onto your Bristol board. Faces are incredibly difficult to draw. So this technique gives you a nice way of learning some of the concepts without committing to something like realism, which can be challenging, frustrating, and simply not enjoyable for some people. You don't need to pick out every little detail here. And feel free to add in any lines that you think are missing. You can see I focused on the cheek area and turned it into a shape. We're going to continue adding in some lines directly onto our photograph, picking out the important parts of whatever area you are going to do with neurographic lines. In this particular image, I'm choosing to use the hair as the primary air of neurographic lines. So I'm just doing the basic shape of the hair, getting some of those amazing curls, but leaving the rest of it open so I can add in my own lines afterwards. Now your subject may not have hair. For example, the hair could be cropped out of the image. They could be wearing a hat. Their hair could be very, very short. They could be wearing a hijab, maybe they're bald, or maybe the portrait is of an animal and they don't have hair, they have fur. Now we really get to start the fun part. We are going to use some carbon paper to transfer the lines onto our Bristol board. Make sure the carbon paper has the black side facing down and position your image where you want it on your canvas. You might want to tape it down. Then go in with a ballpoint pen or a pencil and lightly draw over those Sharpie lines that you picked out. Make sure you get them all and then lift up your work, take a peek and see what it looks like. You're starting to see this come together now. Feel free to use this time to add in any details that you think are important. Now the steps don't have to be followed in this particular order, but I'm gonna go over what I did and you can make choices depending on the mediums that you will be using. I decided to start off with my Sharpie, knowing that it's permanent and that I was mainly going to be using watercolor. I went over those lines with my black Sharpie and I added in extra lines and detail wherever I felt it was important to do so. Let your artist's intuition run the show when it comes to those neurographic areas. Speaking of neurographic, this is the point where we start going in and rounding out all those intersections. I'm only doing it in the hair because I want the variety of line to make the hair and the face stand out from one another. However, I'm always thinking about the principles of art when I'm creating my art. So I've already decided that I will have another area of neurographic art in my composition. 
Now we're moving on to the most difficult part of this whole project, and that is skin color. For the skin color, I am using Copic markers, which are alcohol-based markers, and they won't leave a lot of streaks and smudges like a Crayola marker would. When they are wet, you can still blend them, and when they are dry, you can go over top and build up lots of layers. So even though there's only six markers in the pack, you actually have a ton of layers and depths that you can create with these Copic markers. Now skin does not come in one specific shade and tone all over your entire body. So what we're focusing on here is looking at the values of the skin tone. Two pretty good rules of thumb is that it's easier to start from light and gradually build up darkness, and it's easier to start with more of a yellow base and gradually build in the rosy pink base. As I previously mentioned, I had a plan before I began to have more neurographic art than just the hair. So I'm adding some lines up at the top here. This is becoming the focal point of what the girl is looking at. I'm also using the principle of harmony and unity to ensure we're keeping the neurographic lines going throughout the image. You'll see at the final product, I also use variety and unity by making this section of color the same as her shirt. Speaking of color, let's move on to that now. I wanted to use watercolor, even though Bristol Board is not watercolor paper, so it is going to act a little less absorbent than traditional watercolor paper, but you can still use it because it's thick enough. It won't bend and buckle like a plain piece of paper. The two mediums I've already used are waterproof, Sharpie marker, and Copic markers, so I knew I was able to include a water-based medium into this. This also gave me an opportunity to build on what I already have. I decided my the complexion was just way too light, and I needed to darken up some areas and add a little bit more value graduation throughout. So I went on top of the Copic markers and mixed my own little palette of skin tones. This really helped the face not look as washed out and it also tied everything together because I used this medium of watercolor over the rest of my project. For the background, I knew I wanted to have some bright, bold, contrasting colors happening. Originally, my idea was to have a yellow black background with the contrasting color of purple being in those neurographic lines and for her shirt. But as I started mixing, it turned into more of a lime green, which I really liked. I added in some splashes of turquoise and blue, and I just had so much fun playing around with this part. These bold lines and bright colors give this project a very cool pop art feel. You can see that one choice I have made is to leave a tiny gap of white between the background and the portrait and the neurographic lines. I did this to give the idea of an illumination or glow. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. My computer died while I was filming the next part of this, but it's pretty much the same. Dancing around with my watercolor. The last two steps were to cut it out and to go in and add highlights. Highlights, highlights, highlights. You can't go wrong with highlights. 